In this video, we shall consider portfolio optimization in Excel. So to perform portfolio optimization in Excel, we need two packages. One is the data analysis package and two, the Excel solver package, especially the Excel solver package. Now, the first thing is to check whether in the PC, the Excel you're using have the package or not. So to confirm this, go to the top icons, click on data. When you click on data, check at the top right. You will see that there is no data analysis package. And of course there is no Excel solver package. So to get this, it's simple. We need to install these two packages in Excel. So we go to the top left, and then click on file. And then from the drop down menu, go to the bottom and click on the last menu, which is option. So you click on option again, move down to the uh, bottom, and then take this second to the last icon, which is add-ins. So from this add-in, click on Analysis Tool Pack. Don't say OK yet. What you need to do is to click on Go. So you can see that none of them has been ticked. So we need to tick the packages we want. We want the Analysis Tool Pack for the data analysis. And then we also need the Excel Solver, which is Solver Add-in. Now we could say, okay, allow a few seconds to complete the download. Now it has been downloaded. It has been installed. The installation is complete. So what we need to do is to go to the data, click on this data. From the data, check at the top right, whether I have data analysis, and the Excel solver packages. So we could see that the two packages have been installed successfully in Excel. So now we are ready to do our analysis. We have the daily share prices for five stocks or assets, which include AA, BB, CC, DD, and EE. Of course, they could present Amazon, they could present uh, Apple, they could present uh, BT, GlaxoSmith, Lloyd, Barclays, and so on. We have lots of them obtained from Yahoo Finance, share prices, historical prices. And of course, in this case, we we'll take historical prices from 6th of January, 2022, up to 5th of January, 2023, so one year data. But of course they are recorded daily. So we have daily observations ranging from the 6th of January, 2022 to the 5th of January, 2023. So the first task is to compute the return. So we want to obtain the return for the individual stocks or assets. So to do this, we could still have this for AA, BB, CC, DD, and EE. So simply copy and then you paste it here. Then here we could specify what we want. If you like, you could merge it. We go to home and then merge and center. If you want to put it at the center, alternatively, we could say the daily return. We could also bold it if we want. So put it in bold. So now we have the daily return for these five assets. So let's begin with the first one. We want to work out. Now, what you have to check is the dates. Now, this date you could see here, the sixth and then the seventh. So you could see that the sixth come before the seventh. So 
In this case, the price corresponding to 6 is regarded as the previous price, which could be PT minus 1. Then the price at 7th of January 2022 is PT. And of course, to obtain the return, we have PT minus PT minus 1 over PT minus 1. So in other words, we have the current price minus the previous price over the previous price. Alternatively, you could also take the log form. It could be the lean of PT over PT minus 1. But of course, we want to take this uh, other approach. So we have in the first instance for the AA. So we have this minus this. So you have the observation at cell B4 minus the observation at cell B3 over the observation at cell B3. Of course, in Excel spreadsheet, which is this spreadsheet we could see, now these are the columns, while these are the rows. Each row represents a case, while each column represents a variable. That's why you have the variable names now. All these are variable names. A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E, and so on. So we have the first instance. What do you do now? Enter. So we've computed the first instance here, which you could see this. What have we got? B4 minus B3 over B3. the current price minus the previous price over the previous price. So as we enter, we can as well do the same for all. You take this up to this extent. So you could see that it has been done similarly for B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E. Now, if you click on this, you could see C3 minus, sorry, C4 minus C3 over C3. Click on the next one, D4 minus D3 over D3. Next again, E4 minus E3 over E3. And then the last one, which is from this column F. So you have F, check at the formula tab, F4 minus F3 over F3. So you could see, we've done for all. Now, rather than Repeat it again to work cell by cell to complete all these cells. You want to fill all the information for this cell. All we need to do is to highlight up to this point and then you drag it down because now you've confirmed that as you've done for one instance, it is repeating for other instances or other cases. So we want to do it for all other cases now. You could see, drag it down. That is how it will be completing for all. And then you continue to drag it down. Continue to drag it down until you will stop at this point. Because if you take down to this point, you won't have any observation. It will be not available. So we'll stop at this point. So we now have all the information we want for the daily return. So now that we have computed the daily return, what next should we do? We want to compute the expected return and the standard deviation for each stock or asset. So we could still have this. And then in this case, we could put it here if you want. And then let's transpose this. So right click and then you go to transpose. So we now have this. Now, what we need is the mean and the standard deviation, which is the same as the expected return and then also the standard deviation of the return. But remember, what we are looking for now at this point, remember we're dealing with daily, so we could also co convert it from daily to annual. So it's a matter of choice if we wish to annualize. We can say 
mean and standard deviation of the returns. And then if we're analyzing, then of course we we'll put analyze. So in this case, it has been analyzed. Let's bold it. Yes. So we want to analyze the mean and the standard vision of the returns in this case. So in the first instance, we have the mean. So to obtain the mean, we simply go to average. You could use small case later or upper case later. It's, it's not case sensitive. So either small case or upper case will work. And of course, we're using the inbuilt package uh, average. So we're using this inbuilt average in Excel. So we have equal to average for the AA. You click from the first observations, you want to highlight all of this. So I highlight from the first observation where you click here, then I highlight from the first observation to the last observation. Which is from H3 to H252. And because we're annualizing, we multiply by 252 for the average. Enter. So we now have the average annualized return for AA. That is annualized expected return for AA. Now we can similarly do for this, we have the average expected return for BB, and B is at column I. For A, A is column H, then this BB is at column I. I is located at column I. So we simply have I3 to I252, and then times 252. This is a standard approach in finance. If you want to convert expected daily return to expected annualized return, then we have to multiply it by 252. Now, to double check whether you are right or not, in terms of the observation from I3 to I252, that is from cell I3 to cell I252. You could see very clearly it's highlighted in Excel to indicate that we're actually correct. Then next, again, average for the CC is at column J. So we have J3 to J252. So we have all the observations from cell J3 to cell J25, and they will multiply by 252 to annualize. Similarly, for DD, we have the average of, remember DD is at column K, so we have K3 to K252, and they will multiply by 252. Then next is the EE. We want to get the, the mean or the expected return for EE. And then we analyze it. So to do this, remember EE is located at column L. So we have the average of the observations L3 to L252. And then we we'll multiply by 252, enter. So you could see that we have computed the expected return annualized for 
the individual assets. Now, we want to obtain the corresponding standard deviations. So in this case, the standard deviation would be STDEV in Excel. STDEV. So we have equal to STED. And then what follows? We begin with that of AA. So I highlight from the first observation to the last observation. So we have this. Then what next? Remember, if we take the variance, the variance is the square of the standard deviation, while the standard deviation is the square root of the variance. So if we're taking the standard deviation, and we wish to annualize, then of course, we have to also take the square root of 252, which is a standard approach in finance or mathematical finance. So now this will be times the square root of 252. If we do not want to annualize, where we want to consider the standard deviation of the return, daily, then we don't need to multiply by this 252. But because we want to annualize, we multiply by the square root of 252. We could copy it so that we could use it for the other stocks or assets. Now, entered, And then we have the corresponding standard deviation. Now, the standard deviation for the next stock, which is BB, this will be STDEV in parentheses. And of course, BB is at column I. So we still have I3 as usual to so I252. And then we'll multiply by the square root of 252. Enter. Next again will be the STDEV. That is the standard deviation for the CC. And CC is at column J. So we have J3 to J252. And then we'll multiply by the square root of 252 since we're converting from daily to annual. The next is similarly done, the standard deviation for DD, and DD is at column K. So we have from K3 to K252. And then we'll multiply by the square root of 252 to obtain the standard deviation. Then the EE is at column L. That is the asset or the stock EE. So we have STDEV. Then what follows? We have from L3 to L252. So the observations from cell L3 to cell L252, they will multiply by the square root of 252 in order to analyze it. And then we have this result. So you could see that we have obtained the result for the mean and the standard deviation of the returns analyzed. So we could also have the risk free. Rate. And in this case, we're taking our risk free rate to be 0 0.015, for instance. You could move the cell could shift this to this point to create more space so that uh, you could see it more clearly. Now we've done this. What is the next thing to do? We need to obtain the variance covariance matrix because that will be helpful when we want to compute the expected uh, standard deviation of the overall, that is the overall standard deviation of the portfolio. All right. So to do this, 
we simply go to data at the top icons. Among these top icons, click on data. Then at your top right, you will see data analysis. Click on this data analysis. And there you will see, we have the data analysis package with all these items in the menu. So the data analysis package have all these in the drop down menu. Of course, you could perform correlation, could perform covariance analysis, descriptive statistics, exponential smoothing, and so on. But all we need now is covariance. So click on covariance. Okay. Then what do we want to do? We want to impute the data range. And of course, we take from here. Remember, I'm including also the variable names. So from this point down to the last, which is here. So you could see we have all the values from H2 to L252. Then this question, the data set is grouped by either columns or rows. In this case, it's grouped by columns. So we have in columns. They are grouped by columns. Next is the labels. You could see that the labels here represent the row. So you could see labels in first row. That's correct. We have A, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, E, E. But if you do not include the variable names, then on tick these labels in first row. But because I included the variable names, that is a, that is in the input range, I included the variable names in the input range, that is the reason why I'm ticking these labels in first row, so that Excel will understand that the labels represent first row. In this case, this the, the first row represent the labels rather. That is the variable names. Otherwise, you may lose the information. So make sure you supply the correct information to Excel when you're doing this kind of analysis. Of course, we have this. The next is where you want the result to, to be. Where should we output the result? Now, we have the option of new workbook. So it will bring out a new Excel workbook if we take this. If we're not happy with this, you take this new worksheet ply then it will be on this the same Excel spreadsheet, but you will have a different sheet. You have sheet one, sheet two, sheet three, and so on. Just like here, it will be extended. So what we want to do, we prefer putting the result in the same sheet. So to put them in the same sheet, then this output range, we click here, and then where do you want Excel to put the result? Of course, I'm happy for Excel to put the results somewhere here. And then I say, okay. And Excel will give me the result. So we now have the result for the variance covariance matrix. We could put in as the variance covariance matrix. Alternatively, we could also bold it if we're happy with that. All right, so we have the variance covariance matrix. This is what Excel will supply, but if you want to fill in this, of course, we have all the information we want. The covariance, now in the case of A, A to A, A is a variance, so B, B to B, B is a variance, and so on till E, E to E, E. So you now have the leading diagonal as the variances. This is the variance, the variance, the variance, and so on. But what we actually want now, we want, we want all the observations here to be filled in so that 
when we are computing the uh, standard deviation of the portfolio, then it will be easier. But before that, let us annualize. So we want to annualize. To annualize, we will need to multiply by 252. Now, you may go to the formula tab or from here. So let's preferably do it at the formula tab at the top. So here, we will have times 252. If it is standard deviation, then you multiply by the square root. But because we're dealing with variance covariance, so you multiply by 252. And then you have this. So we'll move to the second. Or rather, we'll begin with all of this. That is for the covariance, that is the variances, the leading diagonal. So multiply by 252, 252. You could copy this star 252. In Excel, star is multiplication, of course. So we have this. Enter, and then we have this result. Oh, sorry, I did something else. This is the one we want, actually. So multiply this by 252. Star 252. And then we'll consider the result. Then next again, this multiply by 252. We have the result. Still move to the next one. We're dealing with the leading diagonal first. And then the last value for the leading diagonal. So we now have for the leading diagonal all converted to annual form instead of daily. So now click on this and then in, at the beginning, I have equal to, then at the end times 252. Enter. The next one is similarly done. Equal to at the beginning and at the end times 252. Do the same for this. Equal to at the beginning and at the end times 252. Move to the next also, at the beginning equal to, and at the end times 252. The next is similarly done, at the beginning 252, and at the end multiply, sorry, at the beginning equal to, and at the end you multiply by 252. The next again, we have equal to, then at the end times 252. Proceed to the next, equal to times 252. Equal to at the beginning and at the end times 252. Then the last we have equal to at the beginning and at the end times 252, enter. So you could see that we have annualized the variance covariance matrix also. The information here, that is the values we obtain. So what do we do next? We want to transpose. So it means this information is the same information here. All right, so we could see this clearly. Now what we want to do, we want to transpose. So to do the transposition, what should we do now? To do the transposition, this is what we're expected to do. 
we will have equal to here because all these observations are the same as the observations that should be here. So we have equal to transpose and then we take from this to this. Then for this, we still have transpose. Then what follows? From this to this. And then next, we have the transpose from this to this. And then the last part, equal to this cell V7, enter. So we could see that we have the variance covariance matrix. What next should we do? We now proceed to allocate portfolio weights. And in the first instance, we begin with equally weighted portfolio. The aim here in this portfolio optimization that we are considering is to have a set of weights such that we can select the best weight, the weight that could guarantee the minimum risk or the least standard deviation at a corresponding highest expected return. So we want to maximize our sharp ratio. We want to ensure that the sharp ratio should be high. It shouldn't be negative at all. It should be positive. So what kind of weights do we need to make the sharp ratio positive and also to give us a higher return at a corresponding lower risk? That is the aim of portfolio optimization. So we are considering mean variance portfolio theory in this case. The mean variance portfolio theory where we need to increase our expected return, but we should minimize the risk. All right. Going back again, what we need to do now, so we have the five stocks or assets and then the weights we could say the assets and then their respective weights we could put the weights and then here we could say the stocks or assets so now what do we do in this case when allocating the weight we have to consider the fact that for equally weighted, that should be the first instance because we don't know the weights that should guarantee the uh, least uh, risk at a corresponding uh, higher or highest expected return and a positive uh, sharp ratio. So what we need to do is to equalize. All the weights should be equal. So we have 0.2. And then it should be 0.2 all through. Because we have five assets. If you have two assets, it will be 0 0.5, 0 0.5. So 0 0.5 plus 0 0.5 will be one. So as a rule of thumb, the sum of the weights must be equal to one. So we have the sum from here to here. So you can see the sum of the weights of the portfolio is one. Now we have this. Here's the part we are looking at. Equally weighted portfolio. We could make it bigger if we want. Uh, let's uh, simply color this. Let me use a yellow color. I could put it in bold also if we want. That's fine. So the equally weighted portfolio. Then we are also looking at the expected return and the standard deviation. And again, we're looking at 
deixar para o jogo. So we might shift this if we want to create more space. That's fine. All right. So we have all of this. Now, what do we do? Our aim is to ensure that we have a higher sharp ratio, a higher expected return, and a smaller risk. That is the standard deviation or the volatility. So to achieve this, we want to use the Excel solver first. In the first instance, after we have computed the expected return, the standard deviation, and the sharp ratio. That is the optimization approach. So now we have not performed the optimization yet using the Excel solver to automatically choose the best weights that can guarantee our expectation. So we want to compute the expected return, the standard deviation and the sharp ratio before we can proceed to use the Excel solver to optimize our solution. So for the expected return, the expected return will be matrix multiplication. In this case, where we have uh, uh, more than two assets. So even if we have two assets, if I'm from two assets onwards, if it's just one asset, very easy. We don't need to use matrix multiplication. But from two assets onwards, two assets, three assets, four assets, and so on, or stocks we could use the matrix multiplication inbuilt in Excel. So this will return the matrix product of two arrays, an array with the same number of rows as array one and columns as array two. So that's what this actually done. So what we want to do here in principle is this width times this mean, for AA, the weight for BB times the mean for BB, the weight for CC times the mean for CC, the weight for DD times the mean for DD, and then the weight for EE times the corresponding mean for EE. That's what we want to do, the matrix multiplication, which is an aspect of algebra. So we're making use of matrix algebra now, performing this operation. So we have equal to matrix multiplication. Then we have transpose. We need to transpose the weight so that the matrix op operation will be feasible. So we transpose the weight. Remember you have to stop at this point, don't proceed to one. Stop at this point, comma. And then what follows? We now have the mean of the returns. So we take the return mean, close the bracket, enter. So we now have the expected return of the portfolio given to us. So this is the expected portfolio return for equally weighted portfolio. Then the standard deviation will be the matrix multiplication. But remember, the first thing you need to do is to take the square root, because you're not dealing with variance, we're dealing with the standard deviation, so we take the square root. So the square root of the matrix multiplication inbuilt in Excel, in parentheses again, matrix multiplication. Then what follows? We now have the transpose of the weights. So we have the weight, comma. Then we take the variance covariance matrix. So if you look at it, this is a five by five square matrix for the variance covariance matrix. While for the uh, weights, the portfolio weight takes this column vector. It has one column and five rows. 
All right. So looking at this, you will see that they will go together. When you transpose, it becomes a row matrix for the weight. So instead of having this matrix as what we've got now, five rows and one column, five by one, it will now become one by five. If we're considering rows and column, that is the transposition. So we have this now, then we multiply by this. All right, we close the bracket, comma again, and then we take the weights. And then we close the bracket. Remember we have double brackets at the end. So this is the operation. We change this width from a column matrix to a row matrix. You could also change it from row matrix to column matrix, but we'll call it vector in this case. So from row vector to column vector, or from column vector to row vector, using the transposition inbuilt in Excel. So we've done this, this is the matrix, variance, covariance matrix. Some have positive values, some have negative values. And in terms of interpretation, like here that you have the covariance B and B, B and A is negative. It means they are not moving in the same direction. So if the covariance, for instance, covariance of X and Y is positive, that means X and Y are moving in the same direction. But if the covariance of X and Y is negative, then it means that X and Y are not moving in the same direction. When one increases, the other decreases. And when it comes to correlation, correlation is actually measuring the strength of the relationship. But in the case of covariance, we're just looking at are they going in the same direction or they are going in different direction? All right, so we have this. So we enter and then we have the result for the standard deviation. Remember this risk free. We could bold it also, just to take note. We could also put it in italics if we want the risk free rate, which is 1.5%. All right, so from here, we can compute our sharp ratio. The sharp ratio is a reward to volatility. It is also defined as the expected return per unit of risk. So the sharp ratio measure the expected return per unit of risk, which is to say that it is the, the expected return minus the risk-free rate over the standard deviation. So we have the expected return minus the risk-free rate over the standard deviation. So we can see the result. The result now is 0 0.1865. This is our sharp ratio. So we have obtained the sharp ratio. Now we have this, our original result for the equally weighted portfolio. I might decide to put it elsewhere here. Oh, sorry. We will not use that option. The right option to use, you right click and then you go to this V one, two, three. This is the one that will paste it correctly for you. Otherwise, of course, we use formula. So if you just copy paste using control V, it will give you some uh, blank uh, spaces where no information will be filled in or it could be seen error, invalid, those kind of uh, 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 comments. So we could see what we've got now. This is for the equally weighted portfolio. Or could I like this? I could decide to change this and then uh, 
I could bold it as usual. Then maybe use a different color like green for the equally weighted portfolio. That is from this point to this point. All right. So you could see what we've got, all of this. Let's do this. You could highlight and then we'll format the cell. Go to border, outline, inside, okay. So you could see what we've got. Now we could do this also. Let me color it. I could use uh, uh, maybe this color, that's fine. So we could see the expected return, the standard deviation, and the sharp ratio. That's fine. We could also bold this if we want all of this to be in bold. Then we bold this. So that's fine. Now, you could see that the sharp ratio is actually small, 0 0.1865. That is about 18.65%, uh, which is small. We expect the sharp ratio to be as close as possible to one. So if we want it to be very close to one, maybe 0 0.8, 0 0.9, and so on, what should we do? Or even 0 0.5 onward from 50% onward, because this is by far below 50%. It's not bad, it's a positive sharp ratio, which is good, it's not negative, but we want to optimize. So to do this optimization, we now go to data. On this data, go to Excel solver at the top right. Click on this solver. If we want everything, to be cleared off, you want to ensure that everything here is empty, the space is empty, then go to reset all. Okay, you can now see, so we want to start from the beginning. It's all we want to do. Oh, sorry. Uh, is this... So what we, we need to do now, in order to optimize our portfolio, we go to data, and at the top icon, you click on that data, and then check at your top right. You will see solver. So click on this solver. This is the Excel solver package that will be used to perform the portfolio optimization. And what we want to do here is to have a set of weights such that we can have the weights that will suggest or guarantee a higher sharp ratio, a higher expected return at 
a lower risk. So now, what do we do? We want to set objective. The set objective is to maximize the sharp ratio. So we have the option of maximizing the sharp ratio or minimizing the risk. If you want to minimize the risk, then we use minimize. That is instead of maximize. And the minimizing the risk has to do with minimizing the standard deviation. Just like the case of profit and cost, we intend to minimize cost and maximize profit when dealing with optimization problem. So we have this, then, so we maximize this, the sharp ratio, by changing variable cells. So is the width. Don't include the one you have from here to here. Then again, the next part is the constraints. So what are the constraints we want now? So we add the constraint. The first constraint is that the sum of the portfolio weights is equal to one. There's a constraint. Are we happy with another constraint? We could also add another constraint that we want our portfolio weights to be all positive. If we do not want any of them to have a negative value. So this should be greater or equal to zero. So if we're happy with this, we could also check here, make unconstrained variables non-negative. And then we also have select a solving method. You could use the GRG nonlinear, simple LP, that is simple linear, uh, the simplex uh, LP, simplex linear programming, could also use evolutionary. But any of these will give the same result. Whether I use the GRG nonlinear or the simplex linear programming, they are both the same. In this case, it won't alter the result. So we can proceed to say solve. So this has been solved for us. You move it away and see the values you've got. So these are the values we've got. If you want to retain the result, you could click on this restore original values if you don't want to retain it. But if you want to retain the result, keep solver solution. Okay. And then you could see. So we have this as our result. This is what we are dealing with now. All of this. These are the portfolio weights. And then we have this. We use any color of our choice. We use this. We use this. All right, so if we're happy with this, then also let's format this. If we want to bold this also, we could bold this information. Now we could see a very high sharp ratio. But what is suggesting now is that for AA, the weight should be zero. We should allocate zero weight. BB, we should allocate this 0 0.4675. For CC, we should allocate zero. DD, we should allocate 0 0.5325. And then EE, we should allocate zero. But the sum of these must be equal to one. So this is the suggestion, even in terms of investment strategy where one could advise a portfolio manager or a stock market investor who is timing the market to end future profit, that this should be the decision. Well, if we are not pleased with this, we can as well change the alternative as much as we want. If this is not okay by us, we could proceed. Now, if we go again, 
and say, okay, we want to change the constraint. Of course, to get everything off, you could go to reset all, and then everything goes off. Then what we want to do before you do this kind of operation, it's always good for you to return back to original. Remember we have 0 0.2, and then it should be 0 0.2 all through for all the weights, which is the same result as this. So we do not lose any information. We could go back over and over. So when we go back again to the excess solver, now we want to maximize. We are maximizing the sharp ratio. And then we set a target. We can say maximize the sharp ratio by changing this, and then what follows? We are changing the weight, then the constraint. We have the constraint that the sum must be equal to one. We add, and then again, if we wish to add another constraint, we can also say that maybe something else we want here, it could be that uh, we want the risk to be a little bit higher than this or less than. So it's a matter of choice. We could also deal with this again. All right, let's proceed with what we've got now. So let's assume that in this case, Let's assume that we want uh, the weight to either be less than or equal to zero. As an alternative, we can do that, but I want to move away from that to another option. So in the next option, we could say that we want the standard deviation to be less or equal to 30%. All right, and then if we're happy with that, we'll proceed. And then you see the result is still the same. In this case, if we do not want it, we go back again to the original. Then what if you also want the next alternative that is to minimize the risk in order to have a higher sharp ratio and a higher expected return? And what we do now is still go back to data, Excel solver, clear everything. And then here we go to minimize the standard deviation. So we take the option minimize. If it is the volatility or the standard deviation which represent the risk, then we need to minimize. But if it is the sharp ratio, then we maximize. So we have minimize by changing the cells and then again we add the constraint so the first constraint is that the sum of the portfolio is equal to one then the next constraint will be that maybe our sharp ratio we want a sharp ratio to be greater or equal to, let's assume, 90%. And if we are happy with this, we can say solve, and then it will solve for us. So you can now see the solution. In this case, we say greater or equal to 90%, and it gives us even more than 90%. We could see a sharp ratio of 1.04 to 1, which is also reasonable, although in principle, we expect a sharp ratio to be very close to 1 and not necessarily greater than 1. But this is also fine. It's not too high. Approximately, this is 1. 0, 4. If you approximate, 4 is 0. So you have 1.00, which is correct. So it's in order. So we can advise a mean variance portfolio investor 
according to this result. So here you could see that the weight that should be allocated instead of the equally weighted, take note of this, rather than the equally weighted, now we now have optimal risky portfolio. So we're now dealing with optimal risky weighted portfolio in this case, instead of the equally weighted portfolio, we'll move to the optimal risky weighted portfolio. So the only one that has a zero weight is the stock or asset CC. The rest of them have positive weight. <laughs> All right, we could also use another alternative, lastly. Now, what if we just change this? We want to change this second constraint. We could change it. What if we do not want this second constraint to be more than 90? Then we could use the option of less than or equal to 90%. So we want the sharp ratio to be less or equal to 90%, but not more than. Okay. Of course, you have every other information correct. We are minimizing the risk in order to obtain a higher sharp ratio. That is a higher reward to volatility. And also, we could also interpret it as a measure of the expected return per unit of risk. So we want to have a higher return at a smaller or lower risk. So now solve and then see the solution. What will this be? You could see that it gives us, in this case, 90% sharp ratio. Then we have a higher expected return and a lower standard deviation. So we are minimizing the risk. In this case, we have a lower standard deviation of volatility and we have a higher sharp ratio and also a higher expected return based on these optimal portfolio weights that we obtain using the Excel solver. So here ends the lecture. Once again, remember these two packages. You need to install the data analysis package and the Excel solver package. And of course, with this, you could go ahead to perform the analysis. You obtain the daily return from all of these. And when you obtain the daily return, you now compute the expected return or the mean, and then the standard deviation of the returns annualized. And then you proceed to obtain the variance covariance matrix using the data analysis package or any other option of your choice. Then of course you could see uh, the risk free is here. When you change this risk free also it could be affecting the sharp ratio because the sharp ratio is the expected return minus the risk free rate over the standard deviation. So we could see that by portfolio optimization it could go a long way to provide a better information to a mean variance portfolio investor or managers when it comes to allocation of weight using a strategy in order to obtain a higher sharp ratio, a higher expected return, and at a lower risk. Thank you so much for your attention and thanks for watching this video.